Good evening, everybody. This is Jarvis S. Scott from What's Happening in Birmingham. Today, I have the honor and pleasure of being with City Council President Jonathan Austin. Good afternoon, sir. I say good, good evening first. <laughs> uh, I just want to catch up with him, find out more about the campaign. Y'all don't forget to go out and vote Tuesday, October the 3rd. First question I want to ask you is why are you running for another term in council? Well, thank you for having me on your show mm -hmm. and for supporting Birmingham. Uh, the main reason why I am running for another term on the city council is is because the city needs to keep moving in the direction that we've been moving in. Uh, over the last decade almost that I've been on the council, I've been on the council since 2008, and over the last almost 10 years, we've done we've made a lot of progress. We see all of downtown is growing up. We see that all the new businesses that are coming into downtown, but we also see that there is a lack of attention and support for our neighborhoods. And so what the council has done over this last term is really made sure that we shift the focus from downtown to our neighborhoods which surround downtown. And so in this term that I'm seeking re-election for right now, or election two, is to make sure that we keep that focus in our neighborhoods. There are ordinances that I'm looking to pass. There's a neighborhood stabilization ordinance, which I'm, I know that you're interested in and the viewers are interested in. There's the economic empowerment zones for our neighborhoods. There is an ordinance to make sure that a certain percentage of the budget is being um, is going to our schools, and and so we and there's also uh, a a much more of a push to make sure that we establish an office of minority and women inclusion or department of, of minority and women inclusion in the city uh, at City Hall, so that we can make sure that historically underutilized businesses, whether those are are uh, black, African American, women, but historically underutilized businesses have a seat at the table and have an opportunity to benefit in the growth that the city of Birmingham is experiencing. And so those are things that I want to focus on on this next term. And that would, would be just like the ordinance that we passed yesterday, the human rights ordinance or the non-discrimination ordinance, is to make sure that we are protecting all of our citizens in Birmingham. Okay. How important is that? Kind of break that down to the average citizen. Cause I know they heard about that yesterday. Yeah, it's very important. The, the most important thing that we can, can really gain from passing an ordinance like this is, is two things. One is that those citizens who feel like they've historically been left out, who are being discriminated against, whether it's sex, age, sexual orientation, um, gender identity, all those different groups, that different class of individuals that we have, and that's a, a lot of different people in our community, but everyone needs to be protected, and everyone needs to feel as if, if, they're, if they have been discriminated against, they can go to someone and, and voice their concerns, their complaints, and try to seek some type of remedy for it. So the ordinance that we passed on yesterday does two things. One is it requires, it, it, it notifies every business in the city of Birmingham that you cannot discriminate against someone for any reason. And that would be a part of every contract that they have with the city. The other part is, is establishing the Human Rights Commission. And what the Human Rights Commission is, is a collection of 11 appointed individuals, nine from the city council and two from the business community and, and organizations that, that are specifically designed to help individuals when they feel like they have been discriminated against, like the Human Rights Commission. Uh, but what that would do is if something happens and there's an issue, that individual can go and take those complaints to the commission, the commission can hear those, and try to come to an amicable resolution between the individual and the business or whatever other entity has discriminated against them. And if they can't, then the individual can take that complaint to municipal court and try to seek remedy through municipal court. And that is the whole goal of, of that. But it's, it does one very important thing for our city as well, what it also does is it allows us to, when we're attracting businesses, when we're trying to develop or, or in, and create more jobs in our community, then those businesses know that we are moving into a city or Birmingham is a city that we should choose to make our home because they have laws that protect our employees, our families who will be moving here to go and work at this business, and it's just a more welcoming and opening environment for all citizens regardless of, of whatever walk of life they come from. Okay, um, so you've been city council person, also council president. Mm -hmm. What do you feel has been your top accomplishments since you've been in office? Ooh, top accomplishments. Well, if you look at jobs, uh, we have we have we've brought thousands of jobs to the city. A, lot, a majority of those are in the district that I represent, District Five, which is all of downtown, all the neighborhoods that connect mm -hmm. downtown. So we go far east to Porto Madrid, as far west as Arcadelphia, and then basically all the neighborhoods in between. 
And so what we've done for, for jobs, say we have definitely brought more business into the city of Birmingham. Uh, but, but also I think one of the biggest accomplishments that I can, I would say is, is not just the jobs, not just Uber, Lyft, the pedal assist, the, the um, uptown and all those things that are happening in downtown, but really making sure that the city council puts a, a, a focus, a renewed focus, energy and effort into redeveloping and taking care of our neighborhoods. Because our neighborhoods have been struggling for so long, abandoned homes, overgrown lots, sidewalks, curbs and gutters, making sure that the city is focused primarily on those neighborhoods. Because downtown is good, it's going to take care of itself, businesses are coming in every day. Uh, but we have to make sure that we take care of our neighborhoods because those that is the most precious resource that we have and as a city government would be our neighborhoods and the people who live there. Well I know you hear this a lot and you know people send this question to you so I just kind of want to walk through a scenario so say if I got an overgrown lot what do I do next? How I get the process started until eventually that lot is cleared? That's a good question. Real quick the Mayor Council Act uh, that was established more than 50 years ago sets very specific guidelines and rules for the roles that the council members and the mayor play. The council members have three main functions, is to advocate, legislate, and pass a balanced budget. We know about a house, we'll advocate for it, tell the mayor, hey, this house needs to be torn down, this lot needs to be cut, this street needs to be repaved. We legislate, we make sure that the mayor has the laws and the tools in place through the law to go and tear this house down, cut this lot, repave our streets, repair our sidewalks, curbs, gutters. And then we also, by passing a balanced budget, make sure that the mayor has the money, the resources, in order to go and tear this lot down, or tear, uh, tear this house down, cut this vacant lot, and repair the sidewalks, curbs, and gutters. So what we do if a citizen has a complaint or an issue like that, they can certainly let us know, their council member know, and we will, we will advocate for it to make sure it gets torn down. We will make sure that there are laws in place that the mayor can use in order to go into that property and cut it or do whatever ne is necessary. And then we'll make sure that he has the money to do that. But ultimately, in order to get a house torn down, a lot cut, a street, sidewalk, curb, gutters, pave, mm -hmm. light, uh, street lights, the mayor has to make sure that he dispatches the city services to do that. The city council cannot do that part. We can only make sure that the mayor knows and then he has to dispatch the services of the city to address those concerns. Okay, I just want to ask that question because everybody always asks that question every year and they feel like you all have the power to get a lawnmower or get some gravel or some tar in the ground. You no, know, like the, the Mayor Council Act is very clear. If we go and direct a city employee other than the employees that work directly for the city council, we can be removed from office, fine, put in jail, all of that. So that is the law. We cannot do that. Okay, okay. So next question is what challenges do you see the next mayor, the next council? Um, well, I think the really just staying focused on our neighborhoods. I think the, the council presented a budget to the mayor of, of more than a month ago now. The budget that we presented had some major categories in it. One, we put six and a half million dollars or recommended six and a half million dollars for our neighborhoods that would address overgrown lots, abandoned homes, sidewalks, curbs, gutters, streets, those things. We also put in a half a million dollars for the office uh, to establish a Department of Minority and Women Inclusion. We put in more than $2 million for our library so that we can start reinvesting into our libraries. We made sure that we had a um, money in there for our employees, merit and cost of living, so all the city employees that are working to, to pick up our trash, keep our streets clean, cut those lots, tear those houses down, are being paid and compensated for that work. And then we also made sure that we have, we effectively doubled the amount of investment that we are giving to our schools so that we can not just give them a blank check and say, hey, Lear, here, here's a check. Um, this, this will be a check for almost $5 million a year, and we'll make sure $5 million a year for the next five years, that's $25 million. But with this check, what we would like for you to do is establish a robotics program in our schools for all of our high schools, and that program will uh, explode, expose all of our students, a captive audience, to and teach them. Because they're there Monday through Friday, 8 to 3. Mm -hmm. But teach them how to either repair the robots, um, program the robots, or use the robots. And, and I say that and I talk about the robots because we have Mercedes, Hyundai, Honda. We're trying to get Amazon here. So 
if we can have a program where we're training our future workforce to be ready to work once they graduate from high school, it doesn't mean that each one of them has to go to work, and it doesn't mean that each one of them has to go to college, but we want to make sure our young people, when they graduate from high school, have that option. And so that is what we're doing, and I hope to see that um, carried out over the next term. I know you spoke earlier about Amazon, and people probably drove downtown and saw the boxes. Can you kind of tell people who don't know anything about it what that's all about and what well, the city's trying to do to lure Amazon? What, what I understand is that we uh, would like to have Amazon here. Amazon is going to be investing five mil five billion dollars into a community, bringing fifty thousand jobs with an average salary of a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So when we make that pitch to Amazon, I would hope that the mayor, the administration, would include in there our plans for our high schools, which would be to to really modernize our high schools through the training, the technology. We'll partner with Lawson State, Jeff State, whoever else we can partner mm -hmm. with to have a world-class, first-class robotics training program, again, that would expose our students to all the types of jobs that Amazon is even bringing to a community, whether that's Birmingham or wherever they ultimately choose to locate, because those jobs are high-paying jobs. All of them do not require a college degree, but they need to have special skills in the different areas robotics program in our high schools will cover all of that. Okay, one thing I did see recently was the auto car that's coming to Birmingham. Mm -hmm. How long did that come about, like the process of work? I know you worked with the city of Centerpoint to kind of pull that together as well. Well, the city council doesn't, we don't really get into um, bringing an individual business here. If mm -hmm. we know of a business, mm -hmm. we, we find out what they want, and then we work with the administration, with the mayor's office mm -hmm. and whoever else to make sure that they come. But the council can't offer incentives. Mm -hmm. We can't do those things because our job is to advocate, legislate, mm -hmm. and pass a balanced budget. If we meet a business that mm -hmm. we want to bring here, we can advocate for that business okay. to make sure that the mayor knows and that the mayor goes and does his job as our chief ambassador, salesman, mm -hmm. uh, and, C and chief executive officer to get that business into Birmingham. Those deals take years a lot of times to come to fruition. We've been working <coughs> overseas for the last several years on different projects for the city of Birmingham, different businesses coming here, and we're now starting to see some of the results of our efforts and labor that we put into it. Even in looking at the example of being able to win the World Trade Center designation here in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And so we're working on that. That, to even get that established, is probably going to take about a year or more to get up and running. Okay, okay. Well, one topic that's always been on people's minds is crime here in Birmingham. What has the council done in the last term to kind of, just, I guess it's recent term, to tackle the issue? And what would you like for them to do in the next term? Well, the, the, again, advocate, legislate, mm -hmm. pass a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that when we know about crime, we advocate, let the mayor know about it. Mm -hmm. When it, there's an issue where the mayor has to enforce some of the laws in the, sta in the city, mm -hmm. those laws need to be in place, legislate. And then we have to make sure, again, that the mayor has the money to hire the police officers, put them on the street, train them, and make sure that they are fighting crime and keeping our residents safe. That is what we have done. So over the years, we have advocated and we have increased the amount of money over the years that we're, that, that we're spending in the police department so that we can make sure we have the highest, best, well-paid, trained police officers in the state. And that's what we have done, and we'll continue to do that. In this recent budget, we all we proposed adding an additional half a million dollars to the police department so mm -hmm. they can even buy some new vehicles because they need those. We also, in this past budget that we, that we passed last year, put money in the budget so that every police officer has body cams, every one of our our police officers on the street have body cams so that can protect our police officers as well as the citizens that they come in contact with. So we'll continue to support the police department that way. Okay. And then, of course, the issue, because people have seen all this growth downtown, they've seen the revitalized neighborhoods, but one concern I guess citizens are having, they're worried about gentrification. Um, what, and this may not be in you all's purview, what, like how is the city or the council handling that topic or tackling that issue? Well, that's a, that's a great question. One way that we are tackling um, gentrification, you got to hit it head on. You know what the issue is. Gentrification is basically a community being reinvested into, and, and it comes with a negative stereotype because typically the, end of the community that, that is experiencing gentrification has been run down, is dilapidated, overgrown um, lots, abandoned homes for decades. We have uh, the majority of our neighborhoods uh, have issues like that within their communities. 
Uh, and so what we're doing to address gentrification, we have two ordinances that, that I would like to, for the council to pass uh, in this next term. One of those is the neighborhood um, economic empowerment zones. Mm -hmm. And what that would do is all of the energy and the investment that we're making, and we see that the growth that we're experiencing downtown through having the tax incentives that we're giving Top Golf, these hotels, um, all the things that, that the city is providing in the way of incentives, money, and all those, to, and, the, and the energy and effort that the city is placing into developing downtown, these uh, economic empowerment zones would basically, we could take Smithfield, for example, mm -hmm. or Eastlake, but we can draw a circle around Eastlake or draw a circle around Smithfield and say, okay, in Smithfield, we, um, there's a commercial part and there's a residential part. Well, we want to make sure that we merge those together and put the same type of effort and energy into those neighborhoods that is being taken into downtown so that when you identify an economic empowerment zone, then you will be able to have the same type of tax incentives, the same type of um, investment from the developers, and all the other benefits that people are receiving downtown, they will be able to receive those in the neighborhoods. But we're not going to stop with just making sure we have incentives. The second ordinance that we will take up in this next term hopefully will be the neighborhood stabilization program mm -hmm. and it's a neighborhood stabilization ordinance that that would require that every for every unit if anyone if 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 a developer wants so much as a stop sign uh, mm -hmm. a connection a right-of-way anything mm -hmm. that would require the city's involvement then you're going to have to and they will every last one of them will have they will need something from the city then you're going to have to allocate a, a, so many of those units, whether they're houses or apartments or condos or whatever, they'll, is this going to have a, a certain amount of them will be affordable housing units so that you're not just building these new, you know, you're, there are people paying $500 rent in a neighborhood, but then you build this high rise or this condo, which we want those things, but you build those and no one in the neighborhood can afford to live in it. That's not, that is not, you know, that is not, um, that, that is not e equitable and it's not good for the community. And so we'll have the high rise and the expensive ones, but you'll still have some that are affordable, that are, that are based on the, the community that it's moving into. That way you won't just drive people out of your city, but you'll be bringing more people together. And that's the whole goal with what the, the city council wants to continue to do, is to, to continue to tear down that divide that exists between the haves and the have-nots. And, and, and do away with this tale of two cities issue mentality things that we have and people are concerned about do away with that and we can do that through legislation through advocating legislation with the city council and making sure we have the funds and paid in place to address those issues now is this the same thing as the land bank no okay okay this is new the land bank we established that i think in 2013 okay. uh, and and the land bank needs some work it's working but it needs it, it needs some more help um and and so we're working through that it's new and with anything new, you're going to have issues and you're going to have challenges, but we're continuing to work through those issues and challenges with the land bank. Okay. Well, is there anything, um, is there any questions? Okay. Is there anything you would like to tell the viewers of Facebook Nation, of Facebook family right now? Um, I think that the most important thing is the city of Birmingham is at a critical juncture. We are, we made so much progress in this community and we, the city council continues to fight for the rights of every citizen in our neighborhood. Every citizen in, in our city has, has a right to affordable housing, has a right to clean neighborhoods, has a right to not walk out of your house and have these raggedy homes and overgrown lots that you see every day, have a right to clean, pay, uh, nice paved streets, sidewalks, curbs and gutters. Those are basic necessities that citizens shouldn't have to fight for. But the city council will continue to fight for those things on your behalf and we just need your support. I'm running for re-election on October the 3rd, and I certainly would love for all those who live in District 5 to vote for me. And if you're watching this and you're, you don't live in District 5, I just mentioned the boundaries. I'll tell you again, it's all the way. We go west to Arkadelphia, east to Porto Madrid, and we have neighborhoods all the way from East Lake to Smithfield College Hill. So if you know someone that lives in one of those neighborhoods, tell them to vote for me and bring their cousin, uncles, aunties, and anybody over the age of 18 that they know is registered to vote to vote for Jonathan Austin October the 3rd. Well, I'll be remiss to add that you have a phone number if people want to call and you arrive to the polls. Yes, uh, you can call 215-2219, and the other number is, is 205, what is it? 
what is it? 703-1555. Okay. Well, that's all the questions I have. Thanks again, man. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah, and thank you. guys, don't forget to vote. All right.